Hey there guys, welcome to another edition of Time About the Movies. Today we're looking at the movies released on March 10th, 1989. And I was going to look at five movies today, but unfortunately I couldn't find any clips from Hanusen, which was the fifth film on the list here, but I did find stuff for the first four films, and I'll talk about those films right now, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about the first movie it released that weekend, the big new release that came out that weekend, if you want to even say big, but... Police Academy 6, City Under Siege. <laughs> An evil crime lord is getting inside information. We've suspected that there was a leak in this precinct. It could be anyone. Making us look like a bunch of fools. Now, Matt. <laughs> Hightower. <laughs> Hooks. You can pick it up at the police impound yard. Boy! Callahan. <laughs> Tackleberry. You'll take the bus and like it now, mister! Jones! <laughs> Target human! Backler! Ah! Hey. Harris! Maple, my Christmas. Or Commandant Lazard. I know we shall soon triumph over our enemies. They're the biggest wheels around. That was very exciting! Wasn't it? Police Academy 6, City Under Siege. You know, it's interesting. I just started watching the Police Academy movies recently because I'm going to review them on the site. And, uh, yeah, a lot of them are not really all that good. I've had these movies in my collection now for about, about seven, eight years now. I bought them at an FYE that was closing down near me. But, um... Yeah, none of them are, it's not a whole lot of them are really all that good. Even the first one is passable, but each one of these movies gets worse and worse with every film that I've seen. And this one was pretty bad, too. I mean, half the cast from the first movie is not in this movie. The jokes don't really work all that well. It really feels like they're just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing whatever works, and nothing is really working. There's just nothing about this movie that's really all that interesting. Like, I really don't... Th I really don't understand why they made so many of these movies, because they really are not all that good, so. That's my quick thoughts on Police Academy 6. Like I said, I'm going to go deeper into these movies when I put the reviews up for the site, late, which should be coming up around the summertime. And uh, that'll be on the, the Reviewing Network website, but yeah, Police Academy 6, I don't know why they kept making these movies. This was the last one that they made for a while, because this one did not do so well at the box office. And we wouldn't get another one of these until about five years later. So that's my thoughts on Police Academy 6. Now let's move on to a slightly better movie, Robert Downey Jr. and Sybil Shepherd and Chances Are. Have you ever felt that the place you were about to enter is someplace you've been before? That the person you're about to meet... This is incredible. Do you two know each other? ...is someone you've met before. Mom, this is my friend, Alex Finch. Have we met before? <laughs> Do you, Louis Jeffries, take Corinne Randolph? <laughs> Uncle Marsh. Who the hell's Uncle Marsh? I was Louis Jeffries! He's not Daddy. Nobody is. Remember this? <laughs> All he wants is your money. You're wrong. He wants my body. I'm going to go upstairs and take a cold shower. Sybil Shepherd, Robert Downey Jr., Ryan O'Neill, Mary Stewart Masterson. Chances are... If you think your life feels familiar, chances are you've already lived it. Directed by the same man that did Dirty Dancing, Emil Ardolino. Uh, this movie was a lot better than I thought it would be. It, really, this premise could have really been... With a bet with a terrible writer and a director, this could have really gone a, the wrong way. But they find a they find a good comfort zone to work with a story like this, a complicated story like this. And overall, it is a pretty it is a pretty funny movie. I like Robert Downey Jr. in this. I like the chemistry that he has with Sybil Shepherd and Mary Stuart Masterson. I like Ryan O'Neill in this movie. I think the casting works really well here. The music is very good. The writing and direction is pretty solid. Like I said, this could have been fallen into the wrong, if this had been in the wrong hands, this could have been really, really uncomfortable to watch. But overall, it's a pretty good movie. I'd highly recommend checking out. Chances are, so 
Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, Terry Gilliam's The Adventures of Barry Munchausen. I think I did it again. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, not Barry Munchausen. <sighs> Terry Gilliam's The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Okay. From the director of Time Bandits and Brazil, a new movie full of noise. <laughs> Sadly, this was not a big hit at the box office, but it's Terry Gilliam, man. Between set, between Ho Monty Python and the Holy Grail in '75, and Fear and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas in '98, he was he was on a roll. Every movie that he made has been pretty good. Jabberwocky, Time Bandits, Brazil, The Fisher King, Twelve Monkeys, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I mean, his worst film was The Brothers Grimm and Tideland. After the brother, after the Brothers Grimm, his track record really went downhill, but. Adventures of Aaron Munchausen. Not a lot of people really talk about it, but you know what? It's a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun. It's a really good, f funny, over-the-top movie. A lot of great lines in it. Half the people from Monty Python are involved in this. And just a nice-looking... But yeah, you got some notable faces in here. John Neville, Eric Idle, young Sarah Polly, who would be in the later be seen in the Dawn of the Dead remake. Oliver Reed, Robin Williams, Uma Thurman... Uh, Terry Gilliam himself cameos in this. It's just a fun movie. It's just a fun, insane, over-the-top movie. It doesn't have quite the same memorability factor that Time Bandits in Brazil and Holy Grail do, but it's still a ton of fun. It's Terry Gilliam doing what Terry Gilliam does best. Fantastic movie. Very underrated film. Definitely check out The Adventures of Barry Munchausen if you can. I did it again. Baron Mun the Adventures of Baron Munchausen. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. I'm keeping these outtakes in here, by the way, so... <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move on from here. Let's get away from that one, and let's go ahead to the last movie on here, Jackknife. Every once in a while, someone special comes along, and your life will never be the same again. Hey, take it easy. Joseph Max. Everybody calls me Max. Max. That's my name. Don't wear it out. It's a ridiculous name. Ain't it? <laughs> Max, what are you doing? Uh, I want you to give this young lady enough pancakes to build a house. And that's on me. A lady don't buy when I'm around. And for you, Sir Galahad. Your friend seems... nice. Just a mad seducer. That's me. Robert De Niro. Ed Harris, Kathy Baker, in Jackknife. You know, with a cast that includes Robert De Niro, Ed Harris, and Kathy Baker, you would think that this movie would have a little more memorability to it, but honestly, I never even knew about this movie until I looked it up, and I had no idea that De Niro was even in this. But, um, heard some decent things about it. Like I said, I've never seen it before, but... It does look a little too generic in a way. Like, I do think it is. It's supposed to be a smaller, serious story. Uh, De Niro is playing a character who was a Vietnam War veteran. He goes to see his friend who has a, who is, has PT, who has a PTSD. And he falls, and De Niro falls in love with his sister. And, um, I mean, it could, I mean, it's not a, a bad concept. For a smaller movie, I think it could work. But like I said, haven't really seen it before, so I can't really comment on it. The trailer doesn't look too bad for it. It's not one I'm going to rush out to see, but I think it doesn't look too bad. I haven't heard anything really terrible about it. But, yeah, like, if you've got Robert De Niro and Ed Harris in your movie, you'd expect that 
this movie to be a little more me memorable to people, but other than that, I haven't heard anything about anyone say anything really interesting about this movie, but except that it's got De Niro in it, but yeah, like I said, nothing, I haven't seen this movie, I can't really comment on it, but that's Jackknife, that's all I really got to say on this one. And with that said, that's going to wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next week, we've got some new movies opening up. Chevy Chase and the sequel, Fletch Lives. Uh, the second underwater horror film of the year, Leviathan. The re-release of The Rescuers. Uh, Rooftops, so Slaves of New York. So, some interesting movies to talk about there. So, check back with me on the next episode. If you like what you see here, hit the playlist on the next page and check out the previous episode to see some more of this of the show. Thank you guys for watching, and once again, I'll see you next time. So until then, I see, until the next time I see you, take care.